Okay, welcome back to Ox Tools. For those of you that uh, don't know me, I'm Tom. Um, we got this uh, closing drill press a while back. This will be the second episode of uh, um, the refurbishment of this. Um, in the first episode, we went through some of the uh, variable uh, speed pulley stuff. Um, anyway, I've done some cleaning on it, a uh, fair amount of cleaning. And uh, I ordered some belts, and the belts came in. And um, so we're kind of getting close to, uh, to putting the top end back together. Um, I removed the chuck. Um, it has a uh, number three more taper in the spindle here. And uh, it had this little, uh, this little Jacobs chuck on it. Um, and this is just a half inch capacity uh, uh, Jacobs chuck here. And uh, I have another one that I uh, got somewhere. <clears throat> and uh, it's a big guy here, uh, which is more appropriate for this uh, particular machine here. Um, this has a pretty low speed, so uh, we can take advantage of some larger drills. Anyway, besides I have the chuck, and uh, I just need to remove the, uh, the arbor and get a, uh, a uh, number three uh, uh, arbor. Um, to this, what is, I don't even know what's on this chuck here. Um, so this is a four Morse to a four Jacobs. So what we need is a, uh, a number three Morse to a number four Jacobs. Um, I haven't looked for one yet, but uh, that's only one, one step, so I don't think it's a big deal to find one of those. Uh, um, Anyway, uh, the other thing that needs to happen here is I gotta I gotta get this arbor off, which is always kind of an interesting thing, uh, depending on how uh, how well they've been seated. Um, so uh, I'm gonna change the camera around. I'm gonna show you uh, how we're gonna do that, and uh, we actually have to make something to do it. Um, and uh, we'll go through that, and I'll show you how to pop that sucker off. So. Okay, so we got this in the uh, in the copper jaws here. And you can actually buy the little uh, the little separation wedges, which is what I did. And um, um, although we got a little problem there, these are too small. Uh, these are for a number three. Um, I ordered these from McMaster Car, and uh, um, they did. They had uh, several sizes. I ordered a couple of sizes, but. Uh, uh, what I thought were going to be the larger ones are actually smaller than these. So uh, anyway, uh, here we are, uh, kind of stuck now. Uh, eh, doesn't work. And uh, oh, actually, you know what we could do is we could demonstrate these really easily. So anyway, uh, you need a pair of these typically, and you put them back to back like that, and um, and then you whack them with a couple of hammers, and they drive together, and the the taper separates. So. Just for fun, okay, well, these aren't quite right. Oh, you know what, I have the smaller ones. Maybe we'll separate this one just for fun. I'll show you how that works. Let me grab those other ones. Okay, so these are the smaller ones. Oh yeah, those look like they'll be fine. So flat side and then flat side like that. And then we'll kind of get them centered up. Let's see. Get it started. And grab some uh, hammers. All right. Well, let's see. It'll probably make more sense to go this way. That way it doesn't rock in the vise. Well, it's pretty tight, eh? Pretty tight. Let's do this. That's pretty stinking tight. You know, huh, it says number six taper, huh. So that, that really should have popped up by now. I mean, 
it's got some pretty stinking serious pressure on that, so. Interesting. Uh, they're starting to splay out a little bit too. Huh. Okay. Holy shit, look at that. Nerfco. What's up? Well, first thing I'm looking for is to see if it's threaded, but uh, it's not. It says uh, number three Morris to number six Jacobs. I mean, it didn't get any plainer than that, right? So, interesting, huh? Boy, I would have, I would have, I would have bet money that would have just jumped right off of there. So, uh, let's fix that one a little bit. Okay. That one's got it too. So, yeah, okay, this is a good one. So, in a situation like this, um, where it's uncooperative like that, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to spray it with a little penetrating oil. Although, if it's a good taper, it probably won't get in there. Um, um, and then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a propane torch, and I'm just going to warm the the uh, the female section uh, real quickly and then uh, boom apply some pressure and uh, and uh, see if we can get it to go okay so I put a little on there and this is uh, Kano Silicoil this is the uh, um, I don't know if you can see that Kano Laboratories this is the uh, uh, in my experience the uh, the best stuff out there um, there's some other stuff. Uh, I've tr tried a few of them, but uh, nothing beats that. Oh, I'm used to just using my hand as a as a gauge to kind of check. Let's see what. what I expected to happen right out of the gate yeah so I'm looking at this let me wipe it off Yeah, so I, this makes a little bit of sense. I'm not, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but it's got it's got score very light score lines around it. Uh, so what it looks like is uh, this thing spun in there, and it may have had some uh, um, metal transfer or something like that going on in there, and um, that caused it to uh, to stick in there a little uh, harder than uh, than we expected. So we'll clean that all up and I'll do a little uh, scotch bright on there and uh, same in the bore just lightly and uh, clean it real good and put it all back together and then that'll just be a backup chuck uh, um, for that uh, for the drill press there. And there's some chips down in there too. Alright well Anyway, that was uh, uh, instructional, right? Um, using these little wedges. And these are actually were the correct wedges for, uh, for uh, that, that particular chuck. So um, our next problem here is uh, this, 
this big mama Luca here. Um, we got to pop that sucker. So let's do ourselves a little favor here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just warm this up a little. Just a little bit, just kind of hot to the touch. You know, and, uh, and just as a calibration point, if you put your hand on it or your fingers like this, and after two or three seconds, you kind of really want to take your hand off, that's probably about 120 degrees, something like that. Um, and um, so it, this is a calibration point. If you, it, you know, if you can only touch it like that, then it's considerably hotter. So uh, even, you know, we don't want to heat this thing up very much because it's, you know, it's a, it's a mechanism, right? And we don't want to wreck it. So, but a little bit of heat, 100 degrees or 150 degrees is not going to hurt anything. And we get a little bit of expansion and then some of that penetrating oil can weep in there. And when we go to do the wedges, uh, well, you saw the difference it made on uh, the first chuck. Okay, so that's, you know, 120 F Fahrenheit. Um, I don't know, what, 60, 50 C, something like that. So let's uh, get a little juice on there. And, you know, if you ever have any uh, really cruddy stuff to take apart, right, um, the longer you leave this on, or any penetrating oil, the better. So, um, for example, if you know if you're going to do something on the weekend, you know during the week, warm it up a few times, squirt it, and, uh, and then when you go to do it for real on the on the weekend, you know the thing generally flies apart. Um, so patience is a virtue in this kind of stuff. Okay, um, so these are going to be our uh, these are going to be our wedges uh, for that larger chuck. And this is just a quarter inch. Uh, Cold rolled steel here, um, six millimeter steel, and uh, all I want to do is just kind of clean up the sides parallel so I can hold it in the opposite direction and uh, and uh, not worry about it. So this is that uh, that Cermet insert uh, cutter that I've talked about. Look at that finish on that. Uh, no oil, dry. You know, I can almost see myself in that finish. So. Um, and you know what, I don't even really care about uh, dimensions on this. It's just uh, just a couple of wedges, um, and so I'm not going to stress out over it. I'm just going to drop that in there. All I care about is two basically parallel sides. So 
I'm cutting in one direction so the chips shoot off uh, away from my camera for the roughing part of it. So, and, and I don't know if you guys picked up on that, is uh, I'm actually using the Rapid Traverse as my feed right there, so uh, and this cutter can handle that no problem. So now I'm just going to feed back across. So I recently picked up a um, a, bow, oops, a Baldor buffer, and I have a I have a deburring wheel on it now, so I don't have to file all these edges. I can just walk over there real quick and uh, and buzz those corners, and uh, which is what I'm going to do. All right. Um, so the first thing is we're gonna uh, we're gonna smack a hole right here uh, in both of these, and. Um, then uh, we'll mill an angle on uh, this this wedge angle on it, and uh, and then the last op operation will be to cut these sides. Um, and these aren't really really too fussy here, so I'll probably just bandsaw those um, instead of milling them. Uh, that way I don't have this horseshoe uh, situation. Um, so. I was watching a video the other night on uh, on YouTube, and uh, a guy was demoing a uh, uh, drilling a one-inch hole in steel, um, and uh, he was using. It, 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 I, there wasn't a particularly good description of the tool, but it was an inserted drill bit of some sort, and he was running it in a uh, in a bridge port. And uh, anyway. Uh, um, he was real happy with the tool, um, but I watched the video and it was a seven minute video and he did one hole. So I got to wonder, I mean the first thing I thought is that doesn't seem like an impressive tool to me and uh, uh, from my experience. Now you've seen these before, uh, I've, I've demoed these. Um, this is a Hoogan uh, Rota brooch, uh, they call it an annular cutter and we're gonna, we're gonna pop through with that. Um, and oh, the uh, the inserted cutter that was being demonstrated was three or four hundred dollars plus probably you know at least two inserts in it, and uh, the inserts are probably twenty bucks a pop too. So uh, a relatively expensive tool, and uh, and um, and it didn't seem that impressive to me. So uh, that's just my opinion, though. I'm not picking on the guy or anything. Uh, I'm just pointing something out. So this is inch and a sixteenth here, and um, um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna pop a couple of holes through. I gotta open it up to inch and an eighth, so I'll probably just drop in there with the boring head and uh, and clear out that uh, that last little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and make a couple of holes here. center there with the, uh, the L camera. So something's going on with my stupid sprayer here. It's got, it's got hardening of the arteries or something. Huh. All right. Let me uh, try back flushing that.
Let's try it. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. Inch and a sixteenth hole. And oh the slug popped out too. I lucked out. Um, now uh, the steel this guy was drilling was uh, about a quarter of an inch thick too, so uh, um, and I'm trying to just tip it so that you can get an idea of the finish this leaves here. I wasn't pushing particularly hard there. Oh, hey, see, a slug came out on that one too, so you know, sometimes you get lucky. But there's a couple of holes. Now, that's a good tool, okay? Um, and um, maybe, uh, maybe uh, this gentleman will, uh, will watch this vid video and then. Uh, Go for a, a forty dollar tool and uh, and probably ten times as fast. So uh, so let's see. Um, let's get this out of here. So, boring head, that's what I want. The two boring heads I have, uh, they, they both use different uh, size Allen wrenches, which, and they're both criterions too, which uh, I could never figure out. Somehow they uh, change their, uh, their sizing, uh, of their sizing of the, uh, of the brooches. So you guys have seen this before, probably. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just probing that uh, that surface, looking for a scratch, like that. Okay, I just touched it, left a little mark. So now I'm at um, that was inch and a sixteenth, and I got to take sixty out of that uh, to get where I want to be. So. And we're at uh, 85 right now, so, okay. Um, let's set this up. And I'm probably just gonna hand feed this. Oop. So always double check your numbers. Because uh, what I noticed was uh, it was heavy on one side and light on the other, so to me that was an indicator that the uh, um, something moved. There we go, that looks better. Let's do 50.
And then uh, I'll measure it a little bit better. So this particular part's not fussy, so I'm just going to save myself some headache and just pull it out to measure it. Uh, normally, you wouldn't want to do that. Um, okay, so that, I'm pretty good there. Let's just do the other one. Yeah, normally, you wouldn't want to just pull it out and... Uh, uh, Measure it because you you might lose your uh, your axis or your geometry somehow. Okay, now we got two holes, inch and an eighth, roughly. Once again, it's not a fussy deal here. It's from removing a chuck. We just got to keep that in perspective. You know, a lot of times, uh, if you don't keep the goal in perspective, you end up uh, spending extra time that you uh, that uh, maybe you don't want to spend. So these will probably get used once, and uh, I'll put them in a drawer somewhere. I'll forget I have them. And then I'll end up making another one, uh, another set of these years from now, and uh, um, it won't be video, it'll be, uh, I don't know, diamond tape recording or some crazy shit like that. So, uh, okay, so let's get this out of here. Okay, so uh, I figured uh, while we're at it, let's have a little bit of fun here. Um, this is uh, uh, for one of the, my YouTube viewers, uh, Chuck, out in Mountain View. Um, we're going to use the little uh, we're going to use a little tilt table here. Um, I wrote an article about these uh, I don't know a couple months ago on the blog, and uh, he liked the idea, and uh, he started building one for himself, and um, Anyway, uh, I actually went and visited his shop and uh, saw his uh, his cool collection of goodies and um, and uh, this uh, tilt table in progress and uh, you, you can kind of see how it's put together there um, and you know he's adding his own spin to it, which is great and uh, and making some improvements uh, uh, to suit his work. So um, what we're gonna so the way this works uh, just real quickly is. Uh, that round bar gets clamped in the vise, right? And what that means is now we can we can tilt this up, you know, at a bunch of different angles, right? Very quickly and very easily, um, and uh, and then clamp stuff to here and do the work. So um, anyway, that's it's it's great for small angles, and uh, it gives a a surface here that is basically sacrificial so you don't have to worry about drilling into it and uh, it's easy to fixture stuff to it and uh, and it's aluminum you just deck it off again and uh, and and continue on and then I don't know I've had this one for I don't know 15 years or something like that and it's been surfaced a bunch of times and uh, you know you can still see it's it's got plenty of life left in it so this thing has this little angle on it, right? And this is a great little job for this. Now, there's a couple ways we could do that. We could tilt it in the vise like this, but this is funner, right? Okay, so let's have some fun. So first, we, we need to figure out what that angle is. Um, actually, we don't need to figure out what it is. What we want to do is just match it, okay? So uh, let's get a couple things going here and we'll, uh, we'll set this up and, uh, and see how it goes. Okay, so... For starters, we're just going to put a 
we're going to put a little fence on there. And actually, that looks... Let's see, where's that going to land? Do I want a wider one? Uh, yeah, I don't really care. Let's go with that. So first, I'm just going to put a little fence on here. And um, the centers of these holes actually happen to match the, uh, uh, the parallel centers there. Now, if I was doing this real fussy, uh, um, you know, I'd indicate that straight and uh, go through a bunch of... Uh, bunch of gyrations there to uh, to make it really nice but uh, for this uh, particular job we're just kind of playing here and uh, having a little bit of fun so uh, and so all these are uh, um, 1032 screws and uh, so I've made uh, different accessories for this and uh, so what we're do we're just gonna push it back on the shanks of those screws and then just pinch this down okay so now we got a nice fence there boop like that and then uh, I think what I'll do is uh, since it's just temporary I'm just gonna put one of my little one of my little toe clamps across there like that and oop, is that gonna make it a little thumb screw uh, let me uh, let me get a longer one I get a longer clamp too. So I got these and uh, made them in different lengths. And that's just a heel. This is the heel screw to keep the the rear end of that up. So uh, all right, all right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to indicate along that until uh, until we're happy. And uh, so what I like to do in this situation is I is I start. I start a little bit high. That way, I can just tap this down, and uh, yeah, you can go the you can go the other way too, and just use these jacking screws and lift it up. Maybe we'll do that this time. Let's uh, let's see where we're at here. So I think I want to put a little uh, little something under there just to just to raise that up a whisker. Okay. All right, that looks kind of flat. Let me get an indicator, and we're gonna indic we're gonna indicate that little edge the thing sitting up oh no okay it's just my imagination now this is just you know We're just having fun here. You know, we're, we don't need to set this precise of an angle, but the demonstration is about what you can do, too, you know? And, uh, okay, so getting bigger going that way. Okay, so it's falling off right away, so, uh, you know, Allen wrench. I'm just going to work this center screw first. So I'm just cranking it up and I'm watching that uh I'm watching that indicator and it's So it's still falling off. All right, let me just raise it up a bit. Now we're away from the pivot a little bit, so it doesn't behave uh, um, the same as a, a vice uh, indicating a vice. Okay, came off the indicator. Go back. You can see I'm just resetting it each time. I'm just going to give it a bunch right there. It's starting to. Okay, so we're getting closer now. You know what? I'm gonna bring the camera in a little closer. Maybe you guys can see this. So, all right, let's try the camera there. So, all 
Oop, where'd my element oh, there it is. Okay, so it's still falling off, so I'm just gonna raise that a little bit. Go back. Now there's a little bump in this piece. Okay, so there, you see I'm pushing on that? That means there's a hollow underneath that thing. Oh yeah. So there's some weirdness under there. So let's, uh, I'm just gonna move that up a little bit so my clamp is sitting on the, uh, the flatter part. All right, well, you know what? Let's try the other one. Maybe the other one's better. Oh yeah, this this one's a lot better. Okay, let's go with that one. So, from heat treating or whatever, that, uh, that uh, thing's tweaked a little bit, so... Uh, um, okay, so now we gotta kinda play the game again here. getting pretty close there and I think there's a little wow in that too actually okay that's pretty good so I think that's our angle and uh, now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do two things here I'm gonna snug the vise now and the bite the vise was just just barely touching the uh, um, the rod in the, in there so I'm gonna snug that down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these other screws down. I'm going to keep my eye on the indicator to make sure I don't, I don't move it. Try to get my big mitt in there and not bump anything. And all these are just kind of support supports for this thing while we're doing the uh, doing the deed there. Excuse my hand, guys. Okay, so those are all bearing against there. That's kind of nice. All right, we got our angle set. Whatever it is, I don't even care. Okay, vice is tight. Let's get this out of here. Okay. All right. Now what we can do is put these in. And uh, let's see. Can I do both of them at the same time? Let's try doing both of them at the same time and see how that works. Um, well, they don't have to be together. So basically our angle is going to be, uh, you know, from about here, this way, like that. And we're going to mill that down. So we've got all this real estate back here to kind of hang on to. Um, so I think what I'll do is... I'll do a two two for one right here like that and um, Clearance, clearance. Yeah, so I'm looking at these screws on the side here. I want to make sure I can get a uh, uh, a toe clamp in there. Okay. And 
And then I'll run, run that guy down. So this is just a, uh, a set screw as a heel, as a heel screw. And I just run it down until it just touches. And then cinch that down. And if these are, uh, oh yeah, that'll probably work. See, this is fun, right? Fun for me. See all this junk you gotta make now, Chuck? Okay. So, um, there it is. So now I'm gonna get a, uh, we'll get an end mill and we'll just start, we'll just start working that. We're gonna use a small end mill, that way uh, uh, the cutting forces are, are low. And um, not that these can't, um, can't handle uh, uh, some some decent milling, but uh, you know we have this long. We have to machine all of this business here, right? Oh, actually, you know what? We only have to machine a little stripe down uh, down each side. I didn't even think of that um, because uh, you know we're going to cut out that whole cut out all the guts out of the middle. So uh, let's uh, let's take advantage of that. Like so, right? So I can put a I can put a little toe clamp on the front of that too if I want. Do I want? Now nah, you know what? Let's go for it without it. Let's try it. If it uh, if it misbehaves, then uh, we'll uh, we'll go to we'll go to Plan B, whatever that is. Okay. All right. So what I got here? This is a. Uh, Three flute, um, five eighths diameter, sixteen millimeter roughly, and it's a it's a roughing end mill, and uh, some people call them corn cob mills because they kind of look like corn cobs, um, but uh, it's a very it's a fine pitch uh, serrated uh, roughing mill, solid carbide, and um, the the beauty of this is I can spin it pretty fast, take light cuts, and the cutting pressure will be very very low. And uh, which is what we want in this situation. Uh, I'm gonna run that about a thousand RPM, something like that. And I'll just come down and just kind of touch off. And then we're just gonna whittle away at that. So, right away I see something here. Um, so, you see the, let's see, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. You can see here the widths of this, the widths of the, of the angle mill are slightly different. Uh, so what that means to me is there's either a, a variation in height in these, um, or um, um, a positioning uh, error uh, in this direction. So one thing with small angles like this is it's really sensitive, the cuts are really sensitive. So when you take an initial cut like this you kind of look at it and if you see any any kind of tapering or any kind of mismatch like that uh, um, stop and, uh, and you know get your indicator out and figure out what's going on. Now um, so 
I think I see what it is here. Um, I'm going to put this up against there. Yeah, okay. So I can rock that scale a little bit. So between this front edge and this front edge here, there's a few thousandths in here. So this one's sitting back, which actually makes sense because it's, it's narrower than that cut. Um, do we care? No, but you might. If this was some kind of fussy die work or something like that, uh, it'd have to be perfect, right? Um, we gotta keep in perspective that these are just uh, uh, chuck separating wedges and uh, but it's just illustrative of how sensitive um, um, small angles are to that kind of stuff. So let's uh, oop, come on forward. Um, let's keep going here and see what uh, see what we get. So I'm just checking vibration there. Feels pretty good. So. We don't want to be in a hurry on this kind of stuff, you know, with kind of light duty setups. Uh, move over. I just sped it up a little bit, 1200 RPM now. Go back to the front. So we're getting uh, we're getting pretty close to the line there. So uh, um, just gonna drop it down a little at a time now. Oh, I, I dropped it a little bit. It moved closer. Okay, let's go with that. That puts us a little past halfway on the hole. No, you can see, oh actually, you know, that goes farther past halfway. Um, do I care? I don't know. Is it worth another pass? What do you guys think? No? Right, okay. Alright. Sold. Okay, so the last little bit is uh, um, I'll just lay these out with scribe lines or whatever and then uh, this stuff will go away out of the middle there. And then uh, we'll give it a try with, uh, with Chucky. E. Alright, so I bandsawed those out. Oh, okay, they're kind of tight. Um, I'm going to file them a little bit. Um, I ran them on the deburring wheel and put a linear finish on them in this direction, nice and smooth. 
because uh, when we put them back to back like that, we want them to slide real good. Um, the, uh, so, you know what? Should we do that? Makes sense. Let me grab a file. So I was trying to move it without losing my registration there to make it kind of even, so. Okay, so I think that's it. So we'll, uh, you know what? This keeps bugging me here. There, now it stays. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I kind of want it tight because they're going to splay a little bit anyway. Um, yeah, they're going on. They're going to splay a little bit anyway, but I want them up tight against the thing. So, crap, I think we're ready for, uh, I think we're ready for uh, the moment of truth here. Now these are just mild steel, those other ones are heat treated. So um, um, we're gonna give this one uh, see, flat and then flat like that. So what I wanna do is give this every chance of coming off easy uh, as we can. So I'm gonna warm this up again. Let's see what the view looks like there. Hey. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, make sure that's tight. Okay, flat, and flat up, like so. Beautimus. So yeah, look at that one. That one looks like it spun too at some point. It's got some galling on it. Anyway. See if these, oh yeah, they hung in there, so, uh, or that one did anyway. Oh yeah, see that one splayed out a little bit. But, we have the correction factor there. That looks alright. Okay, so success. Oh yeah, that's got a little, that's got a little, a little ring in there. Anyway, we'll clean that out real nice. We'll get ourselves the, uh, the correct arbor. And, 
and uh, get that in the new uh, closing drill press.